Hello everyone and welcome to Muddy Beards 4x4. I am Robbie and today we are working on the Trail Plush, my 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. And we're gonna be looking to make a few steering upgrades to make this thing bulletproof for off-roading. Now, the stock steering system that comes on these Grand Cherokees is actually pretty good. It comes from the factory with a crossover style steering utilizing two separate mounting locations on the passenger side knuckle, allowing you to run a tie rod and a drag link independently. This allows the steering system to be a bit more responsive and definitely stronger versus like a Y-Link style steering that you see on a lot of other Jeeps and solid axled vehicles. Now also the steering components on this Jeep from the factory are pretty big they're pretty beefy the tie rod ends are pretty big the tire the drag link and the tie rod themselves are actually a pretty thick diameter tubing but this system is still all stock and i have reason to believe this might be the original component so it's all worn out and loose and my steering just feels really really loose going down the highway and it is still a low hanging steering system that has the chance of bending if I hit it on a rock or a rut or something off road. So I'm gonna wanna upgrade this to make it bulletproof so I don't have to worry about my steering when I'm out there on the trail. Now we are gonna be upgrading our steering using this complete steering upgrade kit from Iron Rock off road. Now this kit's gonna come with everything you need to make that steering bulletproof, including all new solid rod, custom made and bent tie rod and drag link links. It's going to come with all your uh, rod ends. These are hind joint style rod end and of course all the bolts, washers, misalignment spacers and everything you're going to need to upgrade this system to a lot stronger components. Now also, and this is probably the reason why I really went with this kit, is this track bar mount and it comes with this kit from Iron Rock Off-Road. And this is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to lower the mounting location for your track bar, which is designed to help fix steering angles after you lift a vehicle. Now, of course, if you think about it, you lift a vehicle, what it does is put a lot more extreme angle on the track bar, and that can cause a lot of problems, including something called bump steer. So this is attempting to correct that by lowering that mounting location on the frame side and dropping that track bar back down a little bit more parallel. Now, not only that, this of course is, go is supposed to span across the entire vehicle and mount up to the opposite side uniframe channel, which is really, really important because again, when you're adding wheels and tires, a bigger lift, it puts a lot of stress on that track bar. And these are a unibody vehicle and the track bars have been known to crack right there at the unibody frame or um, even rip right off, like rip the bracket right off. This is going to significantly make that whole setup stronger and just really help stiffen up that steering. So IRO, Iron Rock Off-Road provides a really detailed instructions to go with this kit. So we're going to jump right in and get this thing installed. With the factory components now removed, you can see what we're dealing with here. These rod ends are just absolute trash, just junk. And so 
it is good that we're upgrading this whole system with some new stuff. Now, per the instructions, it suggests starting off with actually the track bar. So we're gonna go ahead and get this track bar mount uh, bolted up first. So we do need to remove the track bar from the frame side, from the frame side only. And that does require a little bit of drilling and stuff, but let's go ahead and get this installed so we can move on to the steering. With that now bolted up, we can swing it over here. Don't tighten it yet, just swing it up. And then you can see here where it meets up with the pinch frame, or the pinch seam right here. And so we're just simply gonna mark it out with a Sharpie here, mark those two holes out, swing it back down, drill it out to 7 16 and then we should be able to slide this thing up and bolt it in. Alright, I did have to take a couple days off on this project to get some stuff done around the property, but we did get the track bar installation complete and it looks great. I think this thing is going to help stiffen up the entire front end of the vehicle and it did address that extreme angle that my track bar had from lifting the vehicle. So now that the track bar is all installed, we're moving on to installing this, the drag link. Now, before we get started installing the drag link, there's a couple things that we do need to address. So, since this is now going to be installing to the top side of um, the knuckles, the uh, instructions suggest that you take a file um, and make sure that these are nice and flat. And so I literally just took a hand file and some sandpaper and just made sure that everything was nice and smooth. And that way we have a nice flat surface so that you know our heim joints will sit nice and flush on top of here. Also, right here on the uniframe channel. Um, there is a piece that kind of hangs down right here and it does have a pinch weld right there. So you can't cut it, but in order to clear for the uh, drag link, um, the instruction suggested that you bend that down. So I just simply took some uh, channel locks, um, or not channel locks, but vice grips, uh, clamped onto it, I was able to kind of bend it and then I just took a hammer and pounded it up and I think I should have enough clearance there. So right here before install, we need to make sure that we're putting on our clamps on the correct end um, and the adjuster and then of course our uh, heim joint ends here. So this is the Pitman arm side. And you do need two clamps here on this side. Um, I believe there's an option for a third if you are gonna be running a steering stabilizer still. Um, but this is the adjuster piece. This threads in left hand side. That's how you know you're on the right side. And then we go ahead and we thread in our heim joint. And then I just have these clamps just tightened down a little bit. We're not all the way tight because we still need to make some adjustments. And then here on the other end, you can see it's the same thing. Um, this one, the heim joint just threads directly into the end. And I got my clamp here as well, just ready to go. Now for install, we are gonna need a number of a few pieces that are provided. The first one is this little tapered insert. That actually goes into the bottom side of the pitman arm and then we need our two misalignment spacers and our drill through bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt through first because I think this is the easier way to do it. Then we'll put our spacer in. And then our first misalignment spacer here. Run the bolt through. Then 
Then we take our second misalignment spacer here, and that will sandwich the heim joint. And then finally, we have the provided castle nut to lock everything in place. Now on the knuckle side, it's fairly simple procedure. Um, we're gonna take that thread or that uh, tapered insert. We're gonna go through the bottom of the steering arm there. And the bolt actually goes up through the bottom. Then we're gonna take our misalignment spacers and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sandwich the heim joint. like that and then we take the castle nut once again and we'll tighten her down okay we'll check it out we now have our drag link all installed and I went ahead and tightened up all the bolts and the clamps and this thing is ready to go now um, these clamps when properly oriented should be facing down and then notice the orientation of the heim joint as well. Um, this is how you know that this thing is installed correctly when it's you know, slightly pitched forward here with that misalignment. Now as far as these clamps go, um, I went ahead and tightened them, but I had a little bit of an issue here. So since I have the JKS quick disconnects and those mount outside of the normal end link uh, mounting surface, when I push this over here um, at full lock, it was actually looking like it was going to contact that. So I moved the clamp up facing this way and it looks like it barely clears, um, but I may have to uh, orient this clamp even differently than that just to make sure that we clear that. So that could be an issue, but these clamps are kind of cool because they are what secures you know, the joints in place and you don't have to mess with any jam nuts or anything like that. So these are all go ahead and, and tighten down and uh, when we get this thing all on the ground, we may have to adjust the uh, the steering wheel. And if we do, we're actually going to adjust, you know, this piece here. That is the adjuster piece. So we'll have to, you know, loosen up that clamp again and readjust it once we get everything on the ground. But now that the drag link is on, pretty simple, we can move on to the tie rod. All right, now moving on to our tie rod. We are taking our solid rod link here and we are gonna go ahead and screw in the supplied spherical joints or heim joints here. And to start with, there's the little Allen head bolts here that go on to either side. We are not gonna tighten those yet because we need to make some adjustments here. And speaking of that, here is the factory tie rod um, with the uh, ball joints, tie rod ends and everything still attached. And what we're gonna do is, is we need to make a measurement here from the center of the stud on one end to the center of the stud on the other. And we're gonna wanna record that length. So this one is about 56, it's actually more closer to like 56 than a 16th. I mean, it's pretty darn close there um, to being exactly 56 inches, but let's try to get it right at that 56 and a 16th. Now, the reason why I want that measurement is, is because now I wanna move this to our new tie rod. And the idea here is, and I'm again, I'm just gonna go center of the bolt hole. Okay, center of the bolt hole to center of the bolt hole. And I'm gonna wanna get that about the same. And the reason why we want to do that is, is because if I do that, then my alignment should be pretty darn close and hopefully we won't have to make a whole bunch of adjustments. And if you notice, just kind of right off the bat, I mean, look how darn close we are. If you do end up having to adjust this, just make sure you're adjusting the heim joints evenly on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this measurement is about close to as perfect as we can get, and then go ahead and install it onto our knuckles. With the tie rod now fully installed, you can see how good this thing looks. This looks pretty sweet. So 
making sure that this flat part, of course, is the part that's up. And again, the hind joints oriented this way here. And you'll notice the bends here on the tie rod end, or on, on this uh, tie rod, so that when you're turning it, it'll clear the coil buckets on both sides. So this looks pretty trick. I'm really excited about this. But before we can go and tighten down and lock in our spherical joints with the little uh, uh, Torx bits heads here. Make sure all my bolts are tight and everything and put this thing down for a test drive. Let's talk alignment. So you can do this many different ways and obviously certainly you should be taking it to a professional alignment shop um, afterward to make sure everything is perfect. But this is the way I prefer and essentially all I did was is I just clamped a piece of angle iron here to the flat part of the brake rotor on both sides and then just make sure that this is nice and level. Now it does require two tape measures but you can basically go and pull this tape across from the other side. So just hook it from the other side here and what I can do is I can take a measurement. See how dark it is in here. And you can see that this one is about 61 and I mean to the edge, 61 and a 16th maybe. Okay and so that's my initial. And then what I can do is just run my tape across the front as well. Now what I want is a little bit of toe in. And so what I ended up here with is, is about, oh my gosh, 60 and maybe 60 and 7 eighths. So it's a little too much toed in, probably. We want it a little bit closer than that. So what I can do is, is just take this joint out and probably just run it out one turn and I bet you we're going to be darn close to where we need to be and once I get it close I can tighten everything up take it out on a test drive make sure everything seems right and then I'll be able to take it to a professional alignment shop to dial it in We are out here on a test drive and so far I am really liking this. Right off the bat, the first thing I notice is how much it just seems like this thing tracks straighter down the road. So I mean maybe my little self alignment thing did a pretty good job there and maybe it's better aligned than it was before. Um, but either way it just seems to track down the road. It just seems so much more tighter. Like I mean just when I am rapidly spin the wheel the thing seems nice and tight and firm. Um, I think that I must have had um, an issue also with some bump steer from that extreme angle of the track bar because so far I'm just not noticing that anymore and this thing just feels a lot safer to drive. Um, now clearly my steering wheel is way off so we do have to adjust that and I'm not quite getting my full range of motion especially to the left because it's so far off so, so we got to get this thing back and adjust that steering wheel a little bit so I can get this a little bit more dialed in and I want to try to get it tested off road a little bit so stay tuned all right back from the test drive now and so what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna loosen up these two clamps here um, this is our adjuster here on the drag link and I should be able to put a wrench right on this and um, move it in or out and actually center up that steering wheel it definitely needs to go out I think to uh, get our steering wheel nice and centered up here. So let's go ahead and loosen those, get a wrench on this thing, and we'll adjust this out, and we can actually watch our steering wheel get straighter.
It's been about two weeks and since I was able to button up this new suspension kit on my Grand Cherokee WJ. And while I haven't really been able to get this thing out on some real off-road adventures, I have been bombing around quite a bit on the dirt roads around here and taking this thing out and daily driving it a bit. And my first impression still stands. This thing drives so much better. It's a game changer. This thing is just way more tight. It just seems to track straight down the road. I don't get that wavy feeling like I had before. Now, part of that is probably because my stock joints, uh, those, those tie rod ends were just, I mean, they were trash. So all worn out. Now I have all this new, brand new components. And so I'm sure that plays a role. But I think probably the most important thing is that track bar relocation mount. By lowering that frame side mounting location and dropping this thing down more parallel with the drag link, it just gave me the better steering geometry. And I think that is the main reason why this thing handles so much better now. You know, I think this track bar bracket alone is worth the cost of this kit. Getting that suspension geometry back where it needs to be just makes this thing much safer to drive on an off-road. And there is no cutting, no welding. This thing is super friendly. Um, just bolt it up, drill a couple holes, and it's that simple. Now, this kit also, though, is designed to go off-road, and I think that's truly where it's going to shine. Now here is where this suspension system is going to shine, and that is off-road and especially in max articulation scenarios. Those hind joints or spherical joints are going to just be a lot stronger than the stock ball joints when put through those extreme angles, and that is why I think this is a far more equipped or better equipped system for off-road. Not to mention, I measured the factory tie rod with the uh, factory mounting location below the knuckle and the new tie rod sits about two inches higher than the factory tie rod giving it a ton more ground clearance as you can see I mean we're on the top half of the diff and that's going to give me so much more clearance when I'm off road so not only are we having this you know solid rod construction I mean this is a beefy tie rod but also it's elevated off the ground providing much more security and benefit while off road. So that about wraps up this project on my 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ, the Trail Plush. If you wanna see more content like this and more WJ stuff, please make sure you click the like button and hit subscribe so that way I can keep making more videos. Go check out ironrockoffroad.com. They got plenty of aftermarket support for these Grand Cherokees. And until next time, hopefully anyway, we'll see you on the trail.